Southern Cross is bringing you a brilliant year of AFL coverage and with it comes your chance to win. Each week throughout the AFL season, simply dial 0055 60363 and select the winning teams. You could win $500 cash. All tipsters will be in the draw for a trip for two flying Qantas to the AFL Grand Final. With two nights in Melbourne, tickets to an AFL Grand Final breakfast, great seats for the game and $1,000 cash. Great prizes in the Southern Cross Network AFL Tipping Competition. I am a loser. I am a loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. We're all losers too. Tried everything to lose weight? Then it's time for results. It's a very affordable program, no more prepacked food, and you'll receive one-on-one -on -one counselling. Come on, become, become a loser. loser. Sometimes those who benefit from Heart Foundation research are not obvious at first glance. One of these children was suffering from a life-threatening heart condition, but you could never tell. Rafaela had heart surgery and now leads a normal life thanks to your donations to the Heart Foundation. Every year, my school does jump work for heart to keep our hearts healthy and to raise money to help thousands of people like me. Ask your teachers when your school will jump work for heart this year. Are you outraged when you see Christopher Skates out walking the dog in Mallorca? Are you tired of our government's limp-wristed excuses for not bringing him back? Like to do something about it? Well, you can. Join the chase for Skates today. For only $200,000, America's leading bounty hunter, Bob Burton, guarantees he can bring Skates back home. All we need are 10,000 people to pledge $20 each, and the chase is on. Don't send us any money. Just let us know you're out there by dialing 0055 60650. Don't let this emphysemic arsehole enjoy the Spanish sunshine one minute longer. The chase for skates. Sometimes, the only way to get the job done properly is to do it yourself. Too damn right. And for those of you unfamiliar with the chase for Skase, last week we contacted leading American bounty hunter Bob Burton from Tombstone, Arizona. Security is that good. I don't think he is that alert. I think he might even feel smug about it. I don't think he would. I, I think he's thinking that the Australian government wouldn't do anything that would be embarrassing. But he's overlooking. He's overlooking private sector interest that would take a chance on it. It would take probably uh, two hundred thousand dollars and five to. Five to seven people. Yes, $200,000, that's all we asked. And so we kicked off our Chase for Skase fundraising campaign last week. And let me tell you, this has started a bushfire of excitement around Australia. The papers have picked up on the story, and not just the papers, but Talkback Radio couldn't get enough of it. As you've heard, uh, Skase is now planning a resort empire in his adopted homeland of uh, Spain, Senor Skase is going to be the target of Andrew Denton, a successful of a bounty hunter from Tombstone, Arizona. A chase for case campaign, an outrageous response to an outrageous situation. You need a hand, tell me. Well, John, we've taken you up on that offer and we've had a hand from many thousands of Australians because they called our 0055 line last week. We've had a lot of pledges for money sent in. Let's check that cash total right now. The jackpot total is... Yes, $118,000. Oh, worth of pledges. Which means, which means we are nearly two-thirds of the way towards our stated total of $200,000. Now, if you want to be part of the Chase for Skase, and I know you do, well, this is the number, I'm turning into John Laws, and I know you do. This is the number to ring. It's on your screen right now, 0055 That number again. 00556 call it and you can pledge to be part of the Chase for Skase. Dig deep so we can dig even deeper and bury Chris right in it. That's right. <laughs> Maestro, remove the board, please. Uh, hello, George. Have you uh, pledged to the Chase for Skase? You haven't yet. We'll do it now. No, don't do it now. Don't hang up. We want you on the show. Are you, uh, you're a Star Trek fan, are you? Would you like also to talk to Patrick Stewart, our next guest? Yeah, we'll sound a bit more excited there, George. Thanks very much. <laughs> Patrick Stewart, that's right, Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Now, it's intriguing. What would convince a man to leave the theatres of England where he was a respected actor with the Royal Shakespearean Company for 25 years and take on this job? That's where he's going. It should be noted, sir, that the collapse of the Viridian Star would produce a shockwave similar to the one we observed at Amagosa. Destroying all the planets in this system. Got a great warp here, sir. Set a course for the Viridian system, maximum warp. 
Ah, uh, yes, was it the chance to save the universe? Or was it the form-fitting skivvies? Let's find out <laughs> as we talk to Patrick Stewart. Something re really important that I want to point out uh, yes. that uh, Tom Jones and I do have different outfits. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to think we can only afford one and we're sharing it between us. Uh, because you're dead ringers for each other too, and I could have really confused. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> We've because I was sitting here watching Tom and having the same feeling. You have the most fantastic presence on screen and the most wonderful voice. How do you do that where you whisper, but you, you can be heard at the other end well, of the room? Well, I drink a lot of water. <laughs> I probably do a little of the other thing that Tom doesn't do, yeah, right. more than I should. Have you ever sold a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> no, but you know what? It, it, you see, really, uh, appearing on... Uh, my, is this a talk show? May I call this a talk show? It's also a mime show. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, you don't give up your day job. <laughs> right. um, because you learn all kinds of interesting information. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that Tom had started out as a vacuum salesman. Right. And probably what the world doesn't know is that I started out as a carpet salesman. <laughs> now, if you two had just got I, together. I'm, exactly. Can you see that? Tom yeah. and I going door to door, you know? <laughs> uh, I could sell them the carpet, he could sell them the means to clean it. Yeah, it would well. have been unbeatable. I mean, our careers could have taken off. Yeah. One floors you, the other one sucks. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> Did you, because I know that when you, uh, when you were starting out as an actor, you used your acting skills in your day job. Uh, did you... As a furniture salesman. As a furniture salesman. That's right. How would you, for instance, sell a piece of furniture as Captain Picard? Uh, well, no, you're getting it the wrong way around. What, what I used to do, and I think why I was moderately successful as a furniture salesman, and by the way, I was back in my... in the town where this furniture shop was just a few years ago, during the time that Star Trek was airing, and uh, the owner of the shop took me on one side and said to me, uh, Patrick, um, I want you to know things don't work out for you. you know, there's always a place for you back here. And, <laughs> and because I was actually very good at it, the reason being that I'd, I'd been acting for a number of years by then, that yes. the door would open and someone would walk into the shop, maybe just looking, maybe intending to buy, I didn't know. But I would make, try to make an instant assessment of them and invent a person that they would most like to have them sell them something. Wow. Get it? So, so that they would feel most comfortable with that kind of person. So, so how, how would you sell me, for instance, or sell to me? All right, I would... <laughs> I would immediately suss out that you were smart, witty, intelligent, sensitive. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's nauseating, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> the things you have to do, you know, with these you hosts on these talk shows. You don't have to do this. <laughs> All right, well, there goes your chance to sell me the fabulous Balour Ottoman that I was after. <laughs> Having sussed me out as that, what would you then do? Well, what I would probably do to you is to, is to feed you uh, good lines yes. for your jokes. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be the one that was being funny. Right. It's a bad idea to be too funny as a salesman. Unless you think you're with somebody who'd like to laugh. In your case, I would make you feel witty and smart and intelligent mm -hmm. and all those things. <laughs> then you would feel more inclined to buy something from me. That's very clever. I don't have a lot of jokes in my mind about the vans at the moment, but I'll certainly I'm think... I'm sure you'll come up with something before the evening's over. Now, here we are talking about furniture and, of course, Star Trek is why you're here, and we have a whole heap of Trekkie fans here tonight, you know? do we not? The, uh, the film actually opened today in, uh, in Australia. Star Trek Generations? Nationwide, yes. How devoted do Star Trek fans get? <sighs> well, massively devoted. Um, it, it's a very, very serious following. Akin in some states to an obsession, I would have thought. But people are enthusiastic, and for the most part, because the media have... Uh, no, I didn't mean to gesture in your direction <laughs> so, when so, I said that. So dismissive. <laughs> Did I curl my lip as I said media? The media. Yeah, yes. yeah. That looked like me. Um, <laughs> they, they tend to focus on the extreme... Uh, uh, somewhat bizarre aspect of the Trekkie following. And they represent a tiny minority. Am I right? 
Yeah, of course. Twelve people just answered in Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I can listen, uh, I mean, Dr. Stephen Hawking is a big fan of the show, and in fact, asked to appear on the show, and there's a famous episode in which he appeared with Albert Einstein and, uh, and uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Would have uh, taken him a long time to say his lines, wouldn't it? No, it did not, actually. Really? Uh, that, that, that system functioned very quickly. Really? Incredibly quickly, yeah. yes. And, uh, of course, the other two were actors who were playing, because we couldn't get Einstein and no. Newton. Uh, I think they were doing your show, actually, Hang on. at the time. I thought you could time travel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mustn't believe everything you see on television. <laughs> um, I, we have two, two past chairmen of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I can... a number of uh, chancellors of universities, and a lot of fairly uh, high-flying individuals who are fans of the show. What? And... Uh, Yes, but it is a very, very dedicated following. And please don't ask me why, what explanation I have no, for No, no, I wasn't going to ask you. After I just seven years, I, I really don't know. Except that I think we tell good stories. You do tell good stories. Mm. It's, it's, Star Trek is a serious program. Do you ever send yourselves up at all? <laughs> we, <laughs> once it became clear that the series wasn't going to go away, and we did it for seven years, 178 episodes, wow. um, we made ourselves a promise one day, sitting around in a break between filming, that each actor, every day that he worked, would have to be responsible for one big laugh right. a day. Well, I was working with some very funny people. Uh, I mean funny, humorous yes. people. <laughs> and, uh, so the end result was that we had many, many more than uh, the five or six or seven big laughs a day. I, fr frankly, have never laughed so much in my life as I laughed making that show. And indeed, because the most interesting and exciting job can become at times a little tedious, a little mm -hmm. tiresome. You understand. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you understand, too. Yes, yes. And, and so we did invent alternative scenario. Scenaria? Scenarios. Scenarium? Scenarium. Isn't that where you grow? <laughs> yes, something like that. Welcome to my scenarium. <laughs> I have this fantastic orchid collection. Um, we, uh, so we did invent alternative uh, uh, scenarios. Well, I'll settle for that one. Yes. I mean, such as, for instance, whenever something would come on the screen and, and, and the voice would say, uh, Captain, unless you surrender to us immediately, we shall be compelled, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Well, my reaction to that would be to leap into Jonathan Frakes' arms and scream, we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die. <laughs> and... <laughs> well... I would love I, to see that episode. Uh, I wish you would yeah. make an episode there, of there are. We stopped, the gag reel came to an end in our second season because, uh, largely because I made a big fuss about it, because of, uh, they, instead of doing the regular gag, which is, you know, the good stuff of people falling over and walking in the doors and all yeah. that great stuff. Instead, an editor privately, secretly, put together a whole lot of collection of cuts and re-edited them so that the scenes meant something else. And it was, it was in really rather bad taste and he didn't tell anybody. And yeah. so after that, Gene Roddenberry insisted there would be no more gag reels. I believe that they exist somewhere in the vaults of Paramount. Um, and indeed, you would see moments such as, we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die. Mm, we have a quest in life now. <laughs> I, uh, but I should, I mean, I, I'm, I'm here, s uh, other than to meet you, to, so, to, to... <laughs> Pull yourself together, man! Miss, Mr. Jones got off a plane from Los Angeles this morning. Yes. I have a 24-hour start on him. Look at me, I can't get my... <laughs> Thank would goodness, would you like to tell him. George what it was you were going to say? Still there? George is still there, yes. George, wake up. <laughs> my God. Have you taken out a second mortgage on this phone call? <laughs> Speak to me, George. Oh, um, by the way, I have even less experience of what you asked Mr. Jones than he had. <laughs> I can't hear, he's mumbling. He sounds like some Klingon or something. <laughs> I'm really sorry. But you know what? We had, th these things really are treacherous. This is outrageous. This should have gone off in your show. And we've been doing a lot of promotional tours in Europe. Yep. Everyone has one of these things in Europe. And the most depressing thing is they all take them to restaurants with them. And we, we found that at times our conversation was drowned out by Italians having lunchtime business conversations. I, I stayed in a small English hotel while I was on location two weeks ago. And outside the dining room, there was a little sign which said, no cigars, no pipes, no cellular telephones. And they had to check them at the front desk, like they used to do with guns in the West. Fantastic. Isn't that wonderful? And then they melt them all down and give them back as molten lumps of metal. Well, Patrick, we've hardly mentioned Star Trek Generations. Well, let's talk about it now. No, you have, you fact, have a lot of show we, left, haven't no, you? No, no, no. Well, well, yes, we do, but uh, sadly, other things... You have other guests. Uh, look, it's terrible. Uh, your I mean... loss. Damn it, you're right.
They, they said to me when I came on the show, they said, Andrew is really loose, he's mm -hmm. really laid back, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you know, he will improvise, he'll be as free with the show as mm -hmm. possible. And here you are saying, that's it, good night, goodbye. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry I've been re reading Keanu Reeves' auto cue. I'm really sorry about that. No, look, damn it, you're quite right. We will continue with Patrick Stewart after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Stewart. You win. lungs of our planet and you can help save our forests by reducing the demand for paper one easy way is to recycle your newspaper simply change the date at the top of each page and read it again <laughs> not more OJ Simpson when Roy Nabel's worst nightmare came true all right his remote control mind was zapped. The TV! Now instead of watching the tube, he's on it. 8.30 Saturday on Southern Cross. Stay tuned. You name it, we've got it. Roadrunners Auto Spares. At Roadrunners Auto Spares, you'll find these super specials. 200 amp jumper leads were $19, now just $13.45. Road sound car radios were $35, now unbeatable value at $25. Plus spark plugs to suit most popular makes, only $1.95 each. Roadrunners Auto Spares, 33 Old Main Road, Bridgewater, at Upper Level Centre Point. We've got it at Roadrunners Auto Spares. Neighbourhood Watch started in our community because, well, we were worried about crime. We wanted to do something positive. To protect our homes. Neighbourhood Watch Ooh. depends on a bond between the community and police. Most importantly, between neighbours themselves. It's <laughs> our answer. A community-based crime prevention program. This sign shows you're in a community that cares. It could be your community. Commercial Union Insurance and Southern Cross Network. Building a more responsible and caring community. Sorry, did I break your concentration? From the award-winning movie of the year comes the soundtrack of the year, Pulp Fiction. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks. It goes to show you never can tell. Pulp Fiction, the soundtrack. You're gonna get it. The Derwent Valley Railway, together with the Southern Cross Network, presents Suburban Steam. Sunday, April 9, Hobart suburbs will be alive to the sight, sound and aroma of passenger steam trains. Trains will run from New Norfolk to the city, with stops at Bridgewater, Austin's Ferry, Berrydale and Derwent Park. Take a nostalgic trip back to the age of steam, Sunday, April 9. For bookings and departure times, call Birch Travel on 346049. Suburban Steam, proudly supported by the Southern Cross Network. possess a woman to take the life of not one but two of her own flesh and blood based on a true story precious victims 8 30 monday new from the denton catalog there's nothing like a full cooked breakfast with all the trimmings but most people just don't have the time to enjoy one every morning well, not anymore. Breakfast on a stick. Ideal for the busy commuter. Available in bacon and eggs, baked beans, and new porridge. Breakfast on a stick. Toast sold separately. The Denton Catalog. Gifts for a better world. We are talking to Patrick Stewart, part two.
Uh, Patrick, Star Trek Gener Star Trek Generations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking Klingon now myself. Star Trek uh -huh. Generations. Tell us about it. It's the first movie of the next generation cast, and uh, uh, I am personally delighted that it includes some elements of the original cast, because from the first moment, that sounds awfully rude to call Bill an element, doesn't it, really? <laughs> <coughs> uh, my hero. But uh, from the first time that a, a, a Next Generation film had been rumored around Paramount, I had been a lone voice crying in the wilderness saying that it should include all of the original cast. Right. Because there was something too crude, I thought, about just saying goodnight to all of them and hello to all of these new guys. Apart from that, what a wonderful opportunity to bring both crews together. The first script included everyone, uh, Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly and so forth. But, well, things didn't work out. And uh, we finally ended up with only three of the original What cast. happened to Leonard? Um, th there were, uh, I, I understand that one of the things that happened was that Leonard, Leonard wanted to direct the movie and was asked to direct the movie, but then there were, as they say, creative disagreements. Oh, I see. Um, it would have been fun to have had uh, Leonard directing it. Yeah. And maybe he will direct one of our future movies. He was wonderful in that role. But the important thing, in fact, was, from my point of view, was to have Bill. And, um... That's William Shatner for the uninitiated. I'm really sorry. Yes. yes. <laughs> Lord William Shatner. Yes, you name dropper, you. Yes. Did, did he give you any hints about how to deal with the Star Trek phenomenon? Because you're right in the middle of it. Uh, no, no, he was sensible enough not to give any advice. The only piece of advice that Bill gave me, and I, I hope, I'm trusting that this hasn't yet spread south of the equator, because uh, there's the incident of the, um, of the uh, tights, you know, of the pantyhose, yeah. you know? Oh, you know about Sorry? that? Okay, well, uh, then I'll keep that to myself. No, no. Uh, oh, well, one day, Bill and I had two days when we were on horseback. We had a riding sequence to shoot, and uh, Bill came to me and said, by the way, um, I happen to know that if you spend a lot of time on a horse, you know, hours and hours and hours, you can avoid chafing by wearing, by wearing pantyhose underneath whatever garment you're wearing. And I said, really? Yeah, he said, that's absolutely true. I can recommend it. And not only that, I have two pair in my trailer. <laughs> now, I would rather draw a veil over what Bill was doing with pantyhose mm, in his trailer. I think we all would. Uh, anyway, we, uh, uh, I, I wore them and it worked. The only problem was that Bill, Mr. Shatner, wanted to wear his on the outside of his space. <laughs> um, well, that's those old captains for you. Patrick, it's, it's been a real pleasure. Star Trek Generations, or as yeah. I'd like to refer to it, no, t t t t t t <laughs> has just opened around Australia. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the extra time. They didn't even get to Shakespeare. Would they? No. You're still there, George? For those of you who don't know who I'm talking to, this is a member of our audience who rang up another member of our audience. Where's Fiona? There is Fiona there right now. Yes, Fiona, I hope you're, I hope you're feeling proud of yourself. And uh, George is now a special guest. Say hello to Amanda, George. Hello, George. <laughs> what did he say? The same question he asked Tom Jones. Oh, <laughs> Sick man. Amanda, what are you sampling for us tonight? Well, I thought we'd look at correspondence. I'm going to put you down, George. <laughs> oh, exactly. Um, a lot of people have trouble writing letters, particularly letters that are sensitive or personal. So mm -hmm. trust the Americans to come up with something that allows you to write the most intensely personal letter without any personal involvement at all. Mm -hmm. This is a computer program. This is the manual for it called Personal Letter Works. You get any shot of it? And basically, it's 400 pre written letters that cover every possible emotion, occasion, event that you can imagine. Just to give you an idea, what a good here's, idea. here's just an example of some of the titles of the letters Mum and Dad, I'm Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell us at breakfast? Why are you writing us a letter? Yeah. I'm your biological mother. That's a good form letter. Sh shouldn't that come in a little chew? <laughs> There's also the fabulous, sorry I burned a hole in your sofa letter. Oh, so it covers the whole that's lot. That's so brilliant. How brilliant. many times have I needed to write that letter? Oh, about once. Yes. So it's a, basically you put the program into the computer here. Do and you these know are. So much? Oh, look, I used to work on a science show. You keep forgetting. <laughs> and these are all the different sorts of letters. There are apologies, complaints, congratulations. Now I want the sensitive issues. Let's cut to the chase here. Oh, your sensitive issues. Good. Ooh, raunchy. Hang on. That's just a bit of information no, we don't need. You're so impressive when now, you're. <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> Let's go to telling it like it is. Mm -hmm. Now look at all these ones. Stop harassing our daughter. Stop interfering in my life. I'm having an affair with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to an 
old-fashioned phone call. That's right. Or being found in bed like everyone else does. Yes. Let's have a look at Stop Stalking Me. Now, it comes up with dear name, and what you do is fill in the name of the person you're writing the letter to. So oh, That's brilliant. Oh, it's brilliant. So, for example, here it would be, Dear Keanu. Dear Keanu, on several occasions I've told you that your attentions aren't welcome, yet you persist in telephoning me, lurking around my office and following me. I'm giving you notice that if this stalking doesn't cease immediately, I'll notify the police. There are stalking laws in this state and I will file charges. Lots of love, Amanda. <laughs> so basically... <laughs> So basically, there's a whole lot of different letters. There's this, let me find this one that is just great. This is in the letter to the family up here somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just some letter thinking music. <laughs> <laughs> George, we're yeah. actually just looking at a computer screen now. Here it is. Look, here it is. I know it, it sounds like dull television, but it's actually riveting. <laughs> this one is, it's your turn to take care of Grandma. And uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. This one says... <laughs> <laughs> this one says, Dear Name, I'm thankful we've agreed to share the burden of Grandma's care, blah, 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 but I'm ready for a break. Can you pick her up after lunch on, sun on Saturday? We're planning to leave for Florida on Sunday. <laughs> how, how specific. That's it's, incredible. It's weird, isn't it? Gee, I, look, here's one. This is, um, condolences on the death of a pet. <laughs> uh, dear so-and-so, we were sorry to learn that Thor passed away. <laughs> how many people keep Norwegian gods as pets these days? I don't know. <laughs> He was such a great and loyal companion, it's hard to believe that he won't come racing out to greet us the next time we visit. Tough luck if your pet's a goldfish, eh? <laughs> we, now check this. This is what they've got. We understand your sense of loss. We still miss Corky, even though he's been gone for six years. Get a life, you people! There's another one in here called, uh, that's titled, Your Salesman Has an Offensive Odour. Mm. Yeah, that's a weird format, although this one I found was the most informative. Andrew, this is the My Segment Is Over letter. This is for you. Is that the one? I can't do that. <laughs> George, don't. You have no to. idea what she's asking me to do right now. <laughs> Everybody better say goodbye to Amanda Keller. Goodbye, Amanda. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> who's not good enough to be nominated but can fill the gaps between awards. Never before has a season looked like offering so much. Tony Lockett. Wayne Carey. Jason Dunst. It's a team game, but the current lineup of stars, it's just oh. staggering. I can't wait. Who's up towards Mudra? AFL season 95 is about to begin. Yes, anyway, you and I met a couple of years ago. <laughs> Oh, monkey! Now, a lot of people would take a wedge, all right? But I use an eight iron, all right? An eight iron's better, I reckon, than a wedge because the face of the instrument is not so severe, so... Yeah. Uh, from the sand bunker... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Next time you have a few drinks, consider that how you see yourself isn't always how others see you. Well, I won't tell you again. <laughs> what would you know about what I like? What would you know? <laughs> What's worse, you can't see how the amount you drink may be damaging your health right now. <laughs> Are you colder than I am? How is that? Oh, we got wet here all night. Heads up, look out. Wait a minute. Wait. Can you see anything yet? Just a second, settle down. He's, he's opening the refrigerator. What has he got? What has he got? Look, I can't see. Oh, oh, yeah. Move over, please. Get out of here. Wait a minute. Oh, it's 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 could it be? Oh, it could be? Oh, it could be? University tests have proved that you can get as many people in a Daewoo as you can get in a minibus. At $16,000, the Daewoo can hold 14 people uncomfortably. Or five people very comfortably. There's nothing you can't do in a Daewoo. 
The Southern Tasmania Netball Association offers something for everybody with nine outdoor courts and full function facilities, including a licensed bar and commercial kitchen, to junior and senior roster matches plus mixed team competitions and coaching clinics. The Southern Tasmania Netball Association. Creek Road, Newtown. Telephone 280760 for details. Blade Runner's Rutger Hauer. What is it going to take? Rebecca De Mornay. I like it hot. The premier suspense thriller. Is this a bad time? Blindside, 8.30 Sunday on Southern Cross. George, you're still there? Good, good to hear it now. George, are you a fan of Anthony Morgan? Oh, well, OK, we'll watch him anyway, because... Uh... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome all the way from Melbourne, Anthony Morgan. <laughs> Hi. How are you? you seem to be in a used car yard there, Anthony. I am indeed in a... I'm in Reg Hunt's golden mile of cars. Wow. <laughs> it's the biggest car yard ever. I'm, I'm looking for a car. Yeah? And I feel a bit weird about... I've never got one from a car yard before. When, when, where I grew up, when you came of age, your mum and dad would give you a wheel nut. And you had to pinch the rest yourself. <laughs> we knew our wheel nuts. Yeah. So I've come... <laughs> no, 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 keep going, please. No, that's the end. Oh, thanks for that, Anthony. <laughs> So I, I thought I'd come to the biggest one, Reg Hunt's Golden... Used to be called Reg Hunt's Golden 1.609 kilometres of car. Yeah, yeah. Didn't work. No, not at all. But I'm pretty disappointed in what I'm finding, Andrew. Modern used cars. Look at this one. See, when I was growing up, we used to like to weld two V8 engines together. <laughs> right? Just to give it a bit of grunt, yeah, you know. Yeah. This one, this Holden's got an alloy engine. They're very, very difficult to weld. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's special equipment. This one... This is a Ford, right? Mm -hmm. This has got a computer in it that tells the engine how to go. <laughs> now, in the old days, the engine just knew. <laughs> you know, and they're supposed to be different. Look, they're exactly that. This one's blue and it's got Ford written on it, but apart from that, it's exactly the bloody... Here's another one. Look, exactly the bloody same, except it's got different plastic bits to fall <laughs> on. You know, luckily, Reg has got something for everyone. Come to Reg Hunt's world of proper cars. You must be uh, cleaning up on this particular spot tonight, Anthony. Have a bloody look at this. Whoa. There's, do you know they found recently in these a spider that lives, is born, lives and dies inside E.J. Holden's. <laughs> the pinnacle of its existence is to crawl slowly around the steering wheel while you're going down the freeway. <laughs> like that. This was a turning point, too, in Hold. Remember the EH? They put the red motor in there. The red motor? Rather than the grey motor. Red, much faster. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's faster, red or grey? Oh, red. <laughs> this is the one I'm going to buy, though, I reckon. Whoa. This is you. Have a bloody look at this. The 1965 Holden Premier. Fantastic. When the Stones first toured Australia, this was the best car you could get. <laughs> and the guy selling me this reckons that this was the limo that the Stones used. Right. On their first tour. Sure. No, I, I, I believe him. You know, they have weird... When a car gets up to this age, they have weird selling points. Like, you know, that hubcap's never been taken off. <laughs> well, this one has, but the selling point for this car is the boots. <laughs> The boots he never He shouldn't been... be watching the show while driving a truck. Oh, I think it's safe enough. Yeah. <laughs> he reckons the boot hasn't been opened since the Stones used it. All right. And I figure if we open it tonight, maybe there'll be some Stones memorabilia in there. Right, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. 